Blackwood Chapter has been out a couple of weeks, and my Magplar PvE build is due for an update. Welcome back, gang. This is Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and I'm here to share with you the updated Gladiator build for the Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood Chapter. This video will cover skills, gear, champion points, and more flexible options for solo, group, and beginners. The Templar, Magicka Templar specifically, remains my favorite playstyle in the game because it's beginner friendly with the main spammable well that heals you and what I always recommend for new players. It's easy to pick up and you throw on some more advanced skills and gear to progress both solo and group PvE, dungeons, arenas, and trials, and it just gets better and better. Buckle up, it's time for the updated Gladiator PvE build. Special thanks to my Patreons for sponsoring this video, and if you wish to be featured in the end credits of future videos, link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're going to start with the gear choices, and I'm going to give you three different loadouts. Beginner, solo, and advanced group with flexible options. Number one is the beginner loadout, and I use this to complete uh, Veteran Maelstrom Arena uh, on PCEU with 200 champion points, um, and also my Magic Nightblade with zero champion points. It works. It's cheap, and it's really easy to get a hold of. First five piece we're going to use is Spinners. This is obtained Overland, Malibor Tor, or from Guild Traders. It's going to add a lot of spell pen. You're not going to need a whole lot of spell pen in end game um, PvE with coordinated tanks and healers because they're going to be running B buffs and sets that reduce those mobs' resistance down to almost nothing. But for solo or beginner, it's a really good set. The next setup we're going to use end game or beginner, and that's Mother Sorrow, obtained in Overland uh, Deshaun or from Guild Traders. It just adds a ton of crit. Crit is a must have go to stat for PvE because there's no diminishing returns in the Elder scrolls online it's one of the best stats if not the most important stat along with crit damage so that's easy to get a hold of you can do it both of these sets in the base game and then the next one is willpower also in part of the base game now in imperial city keys or through the dungeon finder as rewards or even on guild traders people don't think to use this as a weapon but as a two piece it gives you 1752 stamina at gold that's a really good value if you can't get more of the fancy uh gear pieces to start out so i go with two five pieces willpower front and back bar double fire staff very easy setup to get you started. Now, after you get started with that, you're going to move on to uh, solo. So this kind of gear set is what I use for a lot of different things. Let me preface it with this. Um, lately, we've been running dungeon with one tank, three DPS, no healer. Same thing with the arenas. And this is the setup that I use for that or doing Vatishram, uh, Hollows, Veteran or Veteran Maelstrom Arena. I run this gear set almost all the time unless I'm doing trials. Slime Craw is a one piece that's going to give you the most crit possible. It's obtaining Wayrest Sewers 1, Veteran Dungeon, very easy to get a hold of. Since we're going to run a Mythic, and the Mythic we're going to run, Pale Order, got a buff. It makes you heal insane for the amount of uh, damage done, which is why you don't necessarily need a healer in dungeons. You're still going to need them in trials, but for dungeons and arenas, you can get around it just having DPS running Pale Order. So this is a mythic you can obtain by collecting the five pieces. I have a separate guide on my website for that. Just know it's not exactly the easiest thing to get a hold of. And you can swap things in and out for something to give you a little bit more healing, specifically Vengeance Leech set. It's a three piece set for killing mobs. It's going to restore health, but nothing just beats a one piece mythic pale order for survivability. And then we're going to run Perfected False Gods. This is a trial set obtained in Veteran Sunspire. Um, or you can run it on normal for non-perfected. And that's exactly what I have. And it works just fine. What it's going to do is reduce your magic abilities by 8%. And when you kill an enemy, you're going to restore magic and gain major expedition. It's going to make you fast. It's going to have crazy sustain. It's a must-have in solo or uncoordinated groups where you're killing a lot of mobs and you don't have someone throwing out orbs and spears and all of these things to sustain you. I love this set. And then we're going to go with a five-piece. You have a couple of different options, okay? So Medusa's or Mother Sorrow. Those are the two ones. We talked about Mother Sorrow. The strength of Mother Sorrow is it adds tons of spell crit. Medusa's, on the other hand, which is obtained in the dungeon Arx Carinium, uh, gives you the minor force buff 
buff at all times. So what you're gonna do, what's the popular thing to do is have this on your front bar. So two jewelry pieces, one body piece, your chest and the staff. That's gonna free up a bar slot on the back, which is really handy for solo play. So I run Medusa's in the solo over Mother Sorrow because I get a free, but free up that bar slot and it makes a little bit more flexible, but both are good options. So a one piece, a mythic, two five pieces, a bit complex, and us all of these builds, you're gonna run divine traits if you can, magic glyphs. I run all light for the penetration um, and all the other buffs and passives in the light armor. And I run double fire staffs now. Um, perfected maelstrom, which we haven't talked about yet. That's gonna be my back bar infused with spell damage. What that's gonna do is it's gonna add to your light and heavy attacks dealing uh, uh, more damage. And I change the morph to have a longer duration so it's easier to keep up because light and heavy attacks, specifically light attacks, are the bread and butter to add tons of damage. So this thing adds tons of damage. Obtain the veteran maelstrom arena. If you can't do vet, just do normal because the added effect is so, so powerful. Just do normal. If you can't do vet, it will make a big difference in your damage. Now I'm going to give you a simple group setup. So if you want something simple, simple, simple to do trials, um, when you have coordinated tanks and healers, this is what I run. We've talked about the two five pieces already. I'm going to run Medusa's on my weapon and jewelry at all times. Free up a bar slot. It's going to make things a little bit easier in terms of rotation. Then I'm going to run a five piece Mother Sorrow on my my body so we already talked about those two the thing that i'm going to run differently is a monster helm now monster helms scale differently now but they're still quite useful specifically in trials because a lot of people are going to run minor and major courage for you uh your tanks and healers are probably going to run minor and major courage for you increasing your spell damage significantly so you're going to be able to hit really high spell damage uh, making these monster helms still effective in group pve so a couple of choices I think there's two really strong choices. Zons, that's obtained in Veteran Scale Caller Peak. It's great single target. Um, I don't use Zons unless I'm doing trials because a lot of the dungeons and so on aren't just a necessarily a single target mob. In trials, you're gonna have very long fights with one mob um, primarily trying to burn it down, your boss with 25 million, 100 million HP or whatnot. So it makes a lot of sense in that context. Grothdar, however, is obtaining Vaults and Madness and that's great AOE because you as a Magpar are gonna be using Puncturing Sweeps. You're gonna be upfront and close making it a really, really good choice. So I would flex in and out those two. You want more single target? Zons is very easy. Now, let's say you're a little bit hardcore in the trials. I would flex out um, one of the sets specifically for a uh, perfected mantle of sororias. This is obtained in trial cloud rest, veteran or non-perfected if you do the normal. What it's gonna do, you deal direct damage, it's gonna create a ring underneath you and you're gonna build stacks increasing your spell damage. This is ideal when you're doing these very long high HP fights because you're gonna be stacking and whacking. You're gonna be sitting there uh, doing light attacks over and over and heavy attacks through your rotation and you can build up that spell damage which is gonna add to the effect of your monster helm. But again, more advanced. If you're not in a part of those advanced trials groups like me, I don't run it necessarily because I think it just comes much easier to have a simpler setup that is very effective running 70% plus crit. Very, very nice. And then perfected crushing wall on her back like we already talked about. So two five pieces, back bar, you're doing VMA, and then a monster helm. Very simple setup. Let's talk about the skills next. And there's a lot of things you can flex in and out depending on where you are in the game and your, your skill level. We're gonna talk the front bar, fire staff, your offensive staff, left to right. Inner light, you're gonna put this on, increasing max magic, spell critical. Um, it's gonna have it on your front bar. It's gonna be make, making your damage do a little bit more and just having that spell critical on. Consider this as a flex spot if you don't wanna run that. But remember, this is simple, simple, simple stuff. Making your bar simpler can help you actually pull off the rotation. Next up is reflective light. So strong AOE damage over time, but consider it a flex spot and you can play around with this. The reason I like reflective light in this spot is because it does AOE, not just single target. Vampire's Bane, the other morph of it, does great single target damage, but if you're doing dungeons primarily and not doing the hardcore trials, this is a better morph in my opinion. Next up, we have Purifying Light. Incredible single target damage. It also provides a heal when it blows up around the allies. So slotting this is 
pretty much a must in group PvE. However, I don't necessarily slot this all the time solo. And if you're a newer player, I would put something simpler here so you don't have another buff to maintain. It's very complex when you have five or six of them. So when I play solo, I don't use Purifying Light, or if I do, I change it out instead of Reflective Light. The skills that I swap in, Camouflage Hunter, this is from the Fighter's Guild. Slotting increases your weapon critical, okay, that doesn't make any sense. But you get Minor Berserk when attacking from the flank. In a coordinated group, you're probably going to have a healer using Combat Prayer on you to give you this buff. But when you're playing solo or 3 DPS in a tank, this will add a ton of damage if you can reliably get behind targets or at least to the side. Plus, it makes things a lot simpler. Consider slotting this. If you're a brand new player and you struggle with sustain, you don't have necessarily uh, false gods or you don't have pit order, consider putting Consuming Trap on here. This is Soul Magic, a uh, world skill line. You tag a mob with this, it dies, it's going to restore magicka and health. Really, really juicy stuff. Now you got Puncturing Sweeps. It's your main spammable. You have to play in melee, but it heals you. This is my favorite ability in the game, if that's not obvious. I just love it. But you don't want to get Tunnel Vision Puncturing Sweeps. So ideally, if your rotation has all the skills on it, you're probably not going to sit here and apply this for four, five, six times. Really, it's usually two to three, depending on how complex your um, rotation is. And then you're going to change and something falls off or is about to fall off. You're going to go back to it. Rating Oppression. This is the morph. You can remorph it and take the other one for a little bit more healing and solo, but it's an executable. You're going to want to use this typically at 40, 35% health. You're going to try to reapply all of your ground effect AOEs and your buffs. And then boom, beam them out. Really, really good still. The Mage's Guild Shooting Star Ultimate. Why I use it on this build is because it has a great AoE stun component. It does awesome damage over time if the mobs are not moving. Um, and it's low cost ultimate with a mage guild skill on our, our front bar, adding a little bit more max magic. I just love this ability because it hits hard, it has great damage over time, and it stuns mobs. So that's the front bar, back bar. This is gonna be um, flexible as well. It's gonna be buffs, debuffs, ground effect AOE. So this is where you're gonna come back to to apply those things. The first is skill up, you can flex in and out. Couple different options. Channel uh, focus. This provides resistance, magic recovery. It's really good. I love using this in group play. So if I have coordinated uh, tanks and healers throwing me spears and orbs and running different debuffs and buffs, this is what I slot. It's going to help you sustain magic, really good skill, and make you tanky. You can flex in another ability, a couple different options, but I like to go with Channeled Acceleration if you're not using the Medusa set. This is the Guild Sigic Order skill line, and it's going to provide minor force buff for a very long time. If I'm playing with three DPS, one tank, what I swap in here is Elemental Drain. So it's nice because it's going to strip the resistance. It's going to give us that mag steal. It doesn't cost anything. It's a good resource sustaining tool for magic users and I put it here especially if there's another magic user then pretty much everything else remains the same so solar barrage is the next ability that's in Dawn's Wrath what it's going to do is you can uh, cast this prior to the fight acting it's going to give you um, empowering your increase in your light attacks and heavy attacks that's going to add so much damage not to mention that it does hit mobs in the area so it's going to blow up in a little radius about every two seconds but increasing your light attacks is really what you're wanting from this next up is your defensive skill a shield that absorbs um absorbs damage for six seconds it's going to help you sustain when you're taking pressure so with pale order i literally don't have a heal beyond puncturing sweeps and harness magic that really just keeps me up so i would suggest swapping that in and out if this feels a little bit weird for you and you're like where's your heal i don't use one because pale order are so strong so at least have harness magic here as your defensive next ability up is blazing spear you can throw it at range it's going to hit really good aoe it's going to have a damage over time effect and it's going to proc your burning light it's going to add a lot of damage plus if you're playing in a group someone can pick up the synergy as well not just mystic orbs um the next ability up is elemental blockade so there's a couple different options you can go with I go with the blockade now because it's 14 seconds long. It's just easier for me to maintain. Unstable wall is a little bit shorter in duration. It has an explosion, a little bit better AOE at the end. Just depends. And then the back bar ultimate that I go with is elemental rage, powerful damage over time ability that deals damage. Basically what it's going to do is fire damage. It's going to do a whole lot of it in a short duration with a big massive radius. 
So you're going to use this over a uh, shooting star because it does it so quick in such a big radius. Think of it as trash pulls. Let's talk about the rotation. So if you want something very, very easy, what you do is this. You front bar maintain reflective light, purifying light, puncturing sweeps. When you don't have purifying light up or reflective light. You do radiant oppression as your main span will at 40% or lower, still maintaining your reflective light and purifying light. I would start here if you're brand new. Once you get used to doing that, then you have different things on your back bar that you can throw in to add more damage. So you're going to pre-buff with channeled focus or whatever elemental drain or whatever your buff is, channel acceleration, solar barrage, you're going to throw a spear because a spear is going to take a second to land. Once that spear lands, you're going to hit blockade, bar swap. Then you're going to go into your reflective light, purifying light if you have it on your bar, and a couple of sweeps. Then you bar, spot, bar swap. You're going to go back and different things are going to fall off. So typically you want to reapply them right as they're about to fall off or as they fall off. So, Solar Barrage is going to be falling off, then you're going to go to Blazing Spear, then elemental, uh, elemental Blockade, Elemental Drain, and so on. So, what you're doing is looking at your buffs. And remember that Sweeps is roughly a second long, so you're kind of looking, okay, so this buff's going to fall off in 1.5 seconds, so that gives me one Sweeps to do, then I'm going to Bar Swap and apply that. Okay, as you apply that, your brain's thinking... Okay, that one's applied. This one's about to fall off. Let's reapply this. This one's about to fall off. Okay, bar swap. And that's really all you're doing. You're using sweeps as a filler in between doing spear, barrage, elemental drain, or channel focus, blockade, reflective light, and so on. So it's quite simple. Start simpler, not more complex. So if five or six buffs and debuffs are way too complicated, because they are very complicated, it's, it's very hard for me. And doing it on a parse dummy is one thing, but doing it when you have to move, take damage, and heal yourself and protect yourself, that's a whole lot different. So make it easier. Take off Purifying Light or put it in repl replacement of Reflective Light. Put Camo Hunter on there. Go back to your back bar, make it simpler, not more complex. And then as you kind of master it and get in the groove, throw in other ground effect AoEs, other damage over times that outproduce your main spammable, and you'll do a lot of damage. Okay, we're going to quickly touch on race. High Elf is my favorite all around. So it has max magic, spell damage, tons of resource sustain, and it's going to reduce your damage when you're channel or casting. So, <laughs> beam, puncturing sweeps, it's a go-to race for uh, for Magpars, in my opinion. Khajiit is probably the top end PvE DPS in like, Trials because of the crit damage bonus. So, it just adds 12% more crit damage and crit healing done. You can't beat that. Dark Elf is very, very good if you want to swatch between, switch between Magic and Stamina build, though it lacks resource sustain, and it has Flame Resistance is also very, uh, very good. Especially if you want to play Vampire in PvP, Dark Elf's a great choice. Breton, last choice, Incredible Sustain. It's a great Magic race, overlooked a lot of times, because it just has incredible sustain. So especially if you're a newer player and want the human look, Breton's a good choice. Consumable, so you have Clockwork, Citrus, or Witch Mothers. Um, there's a couple of different options that you can go with. I do run by stat blue food um, if we're doing dungeons and we can just blow through it. But when in doubt, that recovery goes a long way, especially in Trials. Potions, running spell power potions with a uh, spell crit and spell power just to make sure I have 100% uptime and I'm going essence of health, so tripods. Um, I carry those on too, just in case it gets really hairy. Mundestone, I switched to the Thief Mundestone, so I'm just trying to do as much crit as I possible, but Shadow is also a good choice. Attribute points, I go 64 in Magic. Really, don't worry so much about attribute points, worry about your health. You want your health to be at 22k or higher with food. If you hit that, that's where you want to be. Champion points, they're a little bit more complex now, so I'll do my best to explain what I use. The Fitness, Rejuvenation, Ironclad, Bindless Vitality, Siphoning Spells. Those are pretty simple. The Green Tree, the CP Slottables I use, Treasure Hunter, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and Steed's Blessing. So what do you use for Warfare? Basically, there's two crit ones. Fighting Finesse, so crit damage, crit dealing on. Right, no-brainer. Backstabber, increasing your crit damage done. But you have to be at the flank. This is ideal when you're playing with a coordinated group where a tank can grab aggro. Solo or uncoordinated groups, it's a little iffy because you're not able to get to the flank that often. It's not really helping you that much. 
So Masters of Arms is another good one, doing direct damage, and then you have a couple different choices. You could do the Max Magic one. You could do the spell damage to your, uh, your damage abilities. I like Thaumaturge, increasing your damage done with damage over time effects, and Biting Aura. What I'd recommend is Fighting Finesse and Backstabber, if you're playing in a coordinated group, with Master of Arms for direct damage. And then you have one choice you can pick, like Thaumaturge, increasing your damage over time effects. Play around with it. I actually swap in champion points a lot because there's a lot of good options. It's not just, oh, slot these four and you're good to go anymore. Well, again, that's the build. Kind of went a uh, deep dive in this, but I hope you got something out of this because there's a lot of flexible options. There's, there's not just a one size fits all in PVE. And remember, take this as a base. If you're doing trials and that's your main focus with stationary fights, swap in some gear, swap in some skills. If you're a newer player, change it up too. make it simpler make it more resource and healing based great it's all about what works for you this works for me i'm able to complete the things that i want to do i have a lot of fun it's my favorite play style and i appreciate you taking the time to watch this special thanks to my patreons for sponsoring this video link below if you'd like to continue to support my growth on youtube thanks for watching